Cyclone 52 split RDL. Make sure the anchor point on the cable machine is, is low, okay? At least you want to keep it, you know, from knee high or lower, okay? Or any, anywhere in between, okay? I'm, I'm good with that, you decide. So, um, get a, uh, a neutral grip, okay? Just uh, leave the waist stack, and then get in a split stand, okay? Like so, okay? So notice that my front foot, not only is flat, but it's slightly tilt, tilt in. The reason is I want my five toes in contact with the ground, okay? And then I have a slight, uh, my hip is slightly coiled, see, I'm slightly coiled. So my, uh, I create an imaginary line from my nose, kneecap, and third toe to help me with my, uh, my balance, my center, finding my new center of mass, okay? So, and then when I coil, slightly coil, my back foot, even though the heel is up, notice that my five toes are also in contact with the ground. If I do not coil my hip, they are open here, then only my big toe and part of my uh, ball of my foot is in contact with the ground, which takes away some, um, you know, some stability, you know, being able to be, uh, to have a strong base. So when I do that slight coil, now I have a strong base, I have a low center of mass, so I'm ready to go. This movement, you know, it's, it's just an issue of flexing your hips and extending your hip by keeping your uh, neck and spine neutral alignment, okay? Right here. Your arm just reach, okay? And then extend the hip back, okay? This movement is the same as a Trap bar, split the uh, dirt lift, or the pure motion um, CJ2 or DRB, the split uh, RDL. The difference is the force line changes. It's more horizontal, okay? Still diagonal, but it's horizontal dominant, okay? See, so notice how I keep, I keep on bias to the left side, okay? So that's, that, you know, that's what the force line needs to be. Okay, that's the side that I'm loading, okay? So what you're gonna feel on the way down is a stretch on your hamstring and your glutes. And then when you come up, you feel that squeeze, that tension, muscle tension on your glutes and upper hamstring, okay? So you're getting two for one. You're getting that nice stretch on the way down and then that muscle contraction on the way up. So this is a perfect movement why we don't stretch or perform isolated stretch before a workout or after a workout because we're doing it right here. It's super efficient, okay? And of course, you do the other side. I can feel the left side, okay? But just for camera purposes, notice again how I lean slightly. I mean, again, it's a, lean, it's, it's a slight lean. I don't want you to overdo it. If you overdo it, now your head is on the other side of your front foot, okay? You wanna be, you know, just lean a little bit so your nose is on your kneecap, you know, that straight line, nose, kneecap, and third toe. See, now you flex the hip, and notice that there's a slight hip hinge, see? I hit my hip, uh, hinge my hip, and then up. The common mistake is to arch your neck like so, not desirable, it kind of hurts, it's uncomfortable, okay? Or drop your neck and round your back, like so, okay? Those are the, I would say, two typical mistakes that I see, the collapsing, okay? The other mistake is very common, is to keep your hip open, like so, and then go like that. You see how the back foot, the back heel is dropped, the foot is pointing in the wrong direction, see, there's a power lead going that way, it's just a mess. Okay, and to correct that, all you have to do is pull your hip so your whole leg turns. Okay, now this is your strong base.